A telekinetic is someone who has the power to move objects with their mind. Now, there are different kinds of telekinetics. There are terrakinetics, who can only control the ground, hydrokinetics, who can only control water, pyrokinetics, who can only control fire, and some can only move metal, air, or other things. But the best and most powerful telekinetics can control everything with their minds. And these are the ones that we're going to focus on. Now, although the power of moving things with their minds is what a telekinetic is known for, there's actually a lot of other powers that this ability grants them, such as breathing underwater. Now, water is made of H2O, which is hydrogen and oxygen. Everyone knows that, it's very common knowledge. And we also all know that we need to breathe oxygen in order to stay alive. And the reason we can't breathe underwater is because the oxygen we need is mixed in with the hydrogen, and human lungs can't breathe that in. We don't have gills after all. But a telekinetic can separate the oxygen molecules from the hydrogen molecules and then breathe them, basically moving water around to make a big bubble of breathable air underwater, allowing a telekinetic to breathe underwater pretty much indefinitely because there's quite a lot of oxygen down there. Invisibility. Now as telekinetics can move everything that's around them, they can also move the light. After all, light is just made of waves and particles, and telekinetics can control both of those. So a telekinetic should be able to fold the light around their bodies, thus making them invisible. After all, if light doesn't bounce off our bodies, we can't actually be seen, at least not with human eyes. Of course, the person making themselves invisible would also be blind, because if there's no light hitting their eyes, they won't be able to see, as we need light to refract off our eyes in order to see. We're only human at the end of the day. But they could still use their telekinesis to feel the world around them, kind of like a radar. So being blind probably wouldn't be that much of an obstacle for them. And besides, even if a person did turn blind when they turn invisible, well, still got plenty of uses. Yeah, it's a huge drawback, but there's still plenty of uses for it. Omnipresence. Now, as I said, a telekinetic can use their powers to feel the world around them, like having a little radar. It's basically like having hundreds of hands all around their body that can reach around and feel everything around them, giving them a feel for the whole of the room. This is, of course, on top of their normal senses, and it would give a telekinetic a kind of omnipresence all around them at all times, because they would always know what's going on, meaning that no one would be able to sneak up on them or surprise them. Although I imagine this would take a lot of practice to use every single day. I mean, using it every now and then, sure, people could learn. But having it going constantly all day so you know what's around you? Well, that would be difficult, but not impossible to learn. And if omnipresence does sound a little bit confusing to you, don't worry, just think of it as spider sense, because that's essentially what it is. Which would be very useful. I mean, how many people do we hear about that die in accidents? I mean, we all make that same joke of, well, you might as well do whatever you want, you might get hit by a bus tomorrow. And the reason you get hit by a bus is because you don't see it coming. But if you've got omnipresence, well, you'll always see it coming. So this would actually be really useful in day-to-day -day life. Transmutation. The entire universe is made up of elements that exist all around us. These are hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, and all the other ones that are on the periodic table. Now, we all know this. It's very, very common knowledge. But these things are the building blocks that everything in the universe, including our own bodies, are made from. And the reason things around us actually look different is because they just have different amounts of all of these different elements in different orders. Put simply, if you took a piece of lead or coal and moved the elements, molecules and electrons around a bit, you can just turn that into a diamond. And a telekinetic can move all of those things at will, meaning they can turn anything into anything else. They could easily turn a pencil into a diamond pencil. They can practically make gold out of thin air just by mixing the different elements that are in the air around. I mean, this is a pretty useful ability for fairly obvious reasons. And the only difficult part is that a telekinetic would have to know the correct composition of the elements, electrons, and molecules. But you could learn those things. I mean, we do actually know a lot of the compositions. And this power is still insanely useful, as a telekinetic can basically get any resources they want. I mean, imagine how great it would be to be able to make gold out of thin air. Basically, a telekinetic has an endless supply of wealth. And even if they only learn how to make gold or diamonds, well, that's actually enough, because with that, they can get anything they want and live like a king forever. So it's a very useful ability. Healing. 
As I just said, telekinetics can move atoms, molecules, elements, and all the rest of the things the universe is made from around at will. And as I also said, humans are made up of those things. So a telekinetic could move the parts of our bodies around on the molecular or even atomic level and rearrange them. So say you had a stab wound, well they could just grab all the tissue, line it up and seal it back together. Basically healing you because they can just reconnect all the parts that are broken. Or if a person had cancer, well they could just reach inside their body and destroy the tumour. They can literally telekinetically target any sort of cancerous part of your body and cut it out and get rid of it being able to perform precision brain surgery with a level of accuracy that no surgeon ever could. And just like transmutation, this would take an incredible level of skill and concentration. But it is something that a telekinetic could accomplish with enough training and practice. And I think we can all agree that being able to do this would definitely be worth it. And the most talented of telekinetics could even change a person's DNA. Of course, even if a person had the skill to do this, they'd again still need to know how to change a person's DNA without just killing them. And that would require some extreme knowledge of genetics. But again, it is possible for a telekinetic to do it if they have the training and practice. So it is still a power that they can get. And if you can change a person's DNA, well, then you can change anything about them. You can change a person's race, gender, height, sexuality, or even turn them into a different species altogether. You could easily turn a human into a horse. After all, DNA is what controls human beings, and animals have DNA as well. So really, the potential for this is limitless. Invulnerability Now in some continuities, Superman's invulnerability works with his powers projecting a shield around his entire body. And this shield actually extends a few millimetres past his skin, which is why his suit doesn't get destroyed by attacks or burnt by fire whenever he's in a fight. And if a telekinetic projected a similar force field around their entire body, well then they would be invulnerable. I mean, preferably they would do this all the time, of course, and then they'd permanently be invulnerable. But if that's too much hassle for them to do, well, they could just project it in battle. And thus a telekinetic could temporarily become invulnerable. Now, obviously this would depend on how strong the shield is. Superman's is invulnerable, but a telekinetic's may not be as strong. So say for example, a telekinetic might not be able to survive an atomic blast, but they would still be durable and most likely bulletproof. So that is for all essential purposes, invulnerability, or at least being really tough. But really it depends on how powerful a telekinetic is. And we are assuming they're very powerful. So this shield could potentially make them just as invulnerable as Superman, if not more so. And of course, they're also able to project shields around them at will anyway. So they don't actually need to have it around their body but it is a way of mimicking invulnerability, so it does still count as an extra power. Super Strength This one is kind of obvious, and it's also kind of a lie, so we won't waste much time on it. Now, as I said at the beginning, all telekinetics can move things with their mind. That's what their power is. And much like making themselves invulnerable, if they were to project a field around their body, they could simulate super strength. But really, it would still be the same as them lifting stuff up with their mind. It was just that they would be mimicking looking like they're doing it with their body. But this could be quite useful if you needed to hide the fact that you were a telekinetic. But like I said, this one is kind of a lie because it's not really a separate power. It's just mimicking one. But still, I thought it was worth mentioning. Fire powers. Now, fire needs three things in order to exist. That is oxygen, fuel to burn and heat. This is the triangle of fire. Most of us learn about it in primary school. Now there is oxygen all around us and also fuel all around us in the form of oxygen, hydrogen and other burnable gases and other burnable things that are just around us in general. So all these things need is heat and then you could create fire. And since a telekinetic can create heat whenever they want, they can basically create fire powers, setting fire to anything around them or just creating blasts of firepower, much like the human torch does by igniting all the elements that are in the air. And the reason they're able to generate these heat at any moment is because heat is actually just things moving fast. We can't actually see it, of course, but when things heat up, all the molecules and elements just start moving faster and faster and faster. So a telekinetic can make them move faster at will, meaning they're able to generate heat wherever the hell they want at any given time. And since we're surrounded by things that can be turned into fire, they essentially have fire powers and they also have ice powers. Now this works in exactly the same way as the fire powers. Just as heat is caused by movement, the cold is caused by a lack of movement. 
So this means that if a telekinetic stopped all the atoms, electrons and molecules around them from moving, then they could instantly create ice. In fact, they could actually create absolute zero in an instant, which would mean they could freeze water instantly and basically freeze anything pretty much instantly. They'd even be able to freeze a person's body solid. In fact, they might be able to freeze it faster than absolute zero, because if you stopped everything from moving inside a person's body, it would instantly turn to ice. So this is an extremely dangerous power to have. But like most of the powers on this list, it would be very difficult to do. Fire and ice would both require extreme amounts of concentration and practice. But again, we're talking about really powerful telekinetics, so they're very possible abilities. Lightning. Now, lightning is a static discharge of electricity. Now, that's the sciencey way of saying that if you build up enough static energy, then it would be discharged in the form of a lightning strike, which a telekinetic can. They are able to move things around and build up a static charge, and then they can release that charge in the form of lightning. Now, they might not be able to do a full-on lightning storm like four can produce, but a telekinetic should still be able to move the molecules in the air, statically charge them up, and shoot electricity at people, much like the Sith Lords do in Star Wars. And I have to say that I've always thought this is one of the best superpowers there is. It's one of my personal favourites, because I think it just looks so cool to electrocute people like this. And in truth, most of the super abilities that a Jedi actually has can be performed by a telekinetic, because most, if not all, of the Force powers are pretty much just telekinesis combined with a little psychic power. So if there's anything you can think of that a Jedi can do, Basically, a telekinetic should be able to do it as well. Apart from some of the mystical, magical stuff, of course. And that is all the extra superpowers that a telekinetic has. Or at least all the ones that I could think of to put in this video. Because telekinesis is one of the most versatile superpowers there is. And it has a lot of different applications. And I do mean a lot. It's virtually limitless in some respects. So if you can think of any more abilities that a telekinetic would have, please let us know in the comments along with your reasoning on why they would have this ability, of course. And I'd just like to quickly remind everyone that we have some merchandise available on our store, and to say thanks to all of you who have donated to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.